Hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Thursday. So this week we're going to be talking about why are you increasingly seeing more and more three to five years of experience for an entry level job. And luckily we have Elizabeth here who is a career expert. That's right. So, and you've also done the research. I have. So hit us with these numbers. Okay, so there are two things going on. The reason why we're seeing three to five years of experience is a requirement for entry level roles right now. The first is experience inflation. And the second is job descriptions are merely a wish list. Okay. So they are not gonna be, um, when they have a job description, an employer has a job description, it is not going to reflect actually the people that are out there. That's an ideal candidate that they're looking for in that job description. That person probably doesn't exist. So that's the wish list component. And then the experience inflation component is we are seeing more and more jobs require more and more experience. So in fact, according to TalentWorks, which is a job search site, 61% of entry level jobs require three plus years of experience. And also they are expecting that um, experience will increase by 2.8% every year since 2018. So we know that experience has increased in terms of years of experience that they're requiring by 2.8% every year since 2018. So what does that what does that mean? How, that doesn't make sense to me logically though. Cause how, how can you, are there just no, people have to get their first job. I know, this is a little <laughs> bit of the chicken or the egg scenario here. I think what's going on is college maybe used to be sort of a prerequisite and that was it for an entry level professional mm -hmm. role. Um, and now we're seeing people are getting internships during college and working during college. And so those years of experience are tacking on to the college requirement. Okay. So that, because you've said that before, and I feel like that's a little bit of a controversial statement of mm. if you've been an intern working 20 hours a week for a year, that counts as a year of experience. So technically I would say that you can count your internship as experience. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So it, it seems like a little bit of a, just a branding yeah, so you have worked. I think that a lot of times what happens, especially students who are trying to get that first job, think, okay, my entry or excuse me, my internship wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, that's your experience. You worked there probably for a year or six months. And yes, absolutely, put it on your resume, talk about it as experience. And people know nowadays that you are going to be doing that internship in addition to going to school. So I think that absolutely count it as experience. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, it that's such a strange phenomenon. I think what it speaks to though is that the analytics industry as a whole is starting to mature mm -hmm. to where five, ten years ago it was, and Daniel Hall loves to say this, today's differentiators are tomorrow's prerequisites. And mm -hmm. I actually got it right this time. I feel like I flubbed that every time. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, today we are saying to students, go get an internship, do course projects, volunteer, like do all of these things so that you have a resume that will get you hired. Whereas maybe 20, 30 years ago, that college degree was what really got you hired. Now an internship would be great, and maybe <laughs> if you had one, that's awesome, but now it's like three, four internships by the time you graduate. So I do think, I mean, I don't want people to get disheartened because this is really tough. You're right, it's a little bit of the like, chicken or the egg conundrum, how do I get my first job when I don't have any experience? Like, how do I get the experience to get my first job? And nobody's gonna hire me unless I have experience. So right. I think that's tough. But the way that you do it is what we've talked about on this podcast in episodes before, volunteering, internships, um, course projects. Those are all experiences that you can talk about. The other thing that TalentWorks interestingly studied is that if you are within two years of experience of the job requirement, Go ahead and apply to it. What they're seeing is that people are having success. Applicants are having success when they're within two year range. So if it says three to five years and you have two years of experience, you're in that range mm -hmm. to three years. So go ahead and apply for it. The other thing, back to the wish list idea. So what I typically say is if you have about half the requirements of that job, then go for it. Because worst case scenario, they're gonna weed you out and best case scenario, maybe you have some things that they're interested in, or maybe you don't have all of the you know, soft skills that they're looking for, but they're willing to train you on it. And they just really like you as a person. I've seen this happen to a lot of people. Um, in fact, in previous roles, we have done that. When we've hired, when, and certain offices I've been in, it's sort of like, we like this person, we think they can do it, we can train them. Right. 
Um, the interview with Alex Freeman. Mm-hmm. Fre- Freiburg. Freiburg. Ah, I totally messed it up. But Freiburg. Freiburg. He got his job that he was in no way qualified for. And his manager, like a year later, was like, yeah, we knew you had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> but they liked him. Yeah. So I, I would not get overly down on yourself that, hey, I don't have all these... And it's economic signal theory, which is what Daniel was talking about. Oh. So the, su- the, the signal of the college degree has now become diluted. Mm. So now you need an internship, you need to study abroad. The oh. signal of a year of analytics experience is com- somewhat diluted now mm. to where it, it doesn't give you as much job security. But I do want to caveat this in that there are certain industries where analytics is behind the curve. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I've carved out my consulting agency. So I'm targeting companies that are 150 million in, or less in revenue, and I'm basically coming in as the analytics expert and building out systems. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of moving into the space now where I'm starting to place full time, like Chris Quas. Right. You know, like we put him in that company, um, and like for example, like in COVID, not all companies are hit equally by COVID. Mm-hmm. So you can start to do some research as to where. Are your skills and interests overlapping with the demand in the marketplace? Because there probably are not very many analytics, you know, experts who want to go work in waste disposal. You are now really thinking like a career coach and or recruiter. Oh. Sort of like, yeah. Where do my skills and interests plug into the market currently? What's available? And now's an interesting time because of the COVID-19 crisis. Mm-hmm. You're right. But I think that's a good question no matter what's going on. Think about how you could plug in. And to your point about smaller companies or mid-level companies, they may be a little more lenient on this because they have the opportunity to do that and maybe they don't have their analytics department built out as much as perhaps a larger company. So that's another good point is that could be a place to target if you're not uh, within that range that they're looking for in terms of years of experience. Cool. Well, I think we gave the audience, listeners, I think we gave you a bunch of food for thought. So don't get discouraged if you don't have three to five years of experience. And who knows, if you have internship experience, you might actually have that. Right. Exactly right. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.